now I want to talk about things that I did right, things that I did wrong. I'd like to talk about the finished product, some experiences that I'm having with the finished product, and maybe when is the best time to take this medicine. I'd also like to talk about why Bubba was not added to the mix because I now understand that and I now understand what I'm going to be using Bubba for. So let's start with number one. What did I do wrong? I didn't bake the buds. I didn't bake the buds for 20 minutes beforehand to release the THC. This is a process called decarboxylating and apparently that's necessary in order to release the THC. I already, can already tell you that the finished product that I made is incredibly potent, like incredibly potent. So maybe this particular decarboxylating method isn't absolutely essential to release the THC. And I think that's because the buds don't care what process of heat that's being used to release the THC so long as heat is being used to release the THC. That was the intuitive message that I got. So long as it is in the heat on low for 40 minutes is simmering in the butter that the THC would be released. And boy, oh boy, is that true because I created a very potent brew. Okay, number two, what did I do wrong? I did not grind the buds. There's this body of people that believe that you need to grind the buds prior to infusing them to release the THC. That's not true. Just saying. Don't kill the messenger. The third thing that I did wrong, according to what research I have done, I did not infuse the Mary's butter in water. Part of the reason for infusing the butter in water is two things. Firstly, it removes the green color from the plant from the yellow color of the butter. And so you get a more a true butter like color. That's true. With my particular blend, there is a definite hue of green throughout the coloring. So yes, that appears to be true. The other idea of infusing the butter in water and or putting water in the butter as it's heating is to prevent the butter from burning. If I had never made ghee before, I might concur with that conclusion. FYI, I don't concur with that conclusion for the simple fact that I have clarified butter. When you use low heat, butter does not burn. When you're stirring it constantly, butter does not burn. Maybe this is true for some people, it was not true for me. The only part that, of this that was true was the fact that the, the green color from the buds infused with the color of the yellow in the butter. I don't mind that. And additionally, with that color comes a flavor. I don't mind that either. So I guess purpose and intention, uh, if you want a strictly butter flavor and butter looking end product, then you might want to infuse it in water. Otherwise, it's not necessary. The number four thing that I did wrong is use too much cannabis in recipes. The end product that I made was a very, very potent brew. And I don't know how much to use. I'm allowing my mind to dictate the recipes that I'm making instead of relying on my body. In future videos, as I use this butter in different recipes, I will ask the wisdom of my body how much, exactly how much of this butter to use in each of the recipes. Until that happens, for now, I'm strictly just using my thinking brain and following traditional recipes. And what I'm finding is that because when you consume THC, it works through the bloodstream as opposed to when you smoke or vape, it goes through the respiratory, through the lungs. The effect of when the THC kicks in is very prolonged compared to when you smoke it or when you vape it. When you smoke it, when you vape it, the effects are almost immediate. 
However, when you eat it, because it works in the bloodstream, it has a almost like there's a delayed reaction to the effect. And this is what I'm finding. I made some chocolate in heart molds, silicone heart molds, two nights ago. I had three pieces of chocolate right out of the gate. And about two hours later, my body was completely relaxed. It felt very heavy. My mind was alert. I had a similar effect to had I have smoked it, but it was a delayed reaction. And so it took me a while to realize it's almost like I felt myself slipping into that altered physical and conscious reaction to the THC. There was a delayed reaction. And because of that, I wasn't really aware that I was slowly slipping into it. So there's this disconnect. It's such a subtle slowing down of energy. When, the, when you eat the cannabis and the THC works in the bloodstream, as opposed to when you smoke or vape and the THC works in your oxygen in the respiratory area. So for me, I'm going to have to really confer with my body much more than my consciousness because the body's the one that's having the effect. Well, so is the consciousness, right? Now that said, pain relief, a profound pain relief. And in fact, because I have a history of in past smoking, and I am now experimenting with eating, 100% eating the cannabis and having the THC work through the bloodstream has a far greater pain relief effect than smoking or vaping. My personal point of view is that both have their time and place. By innate nature, I am a channel and I'm a shaman. I work with plant medicine. And part of shamanism is that yes, you smoke either sacred tobacco or extra sacred tobacco, what we call as cannabis, very small amounts, and you have a, uh, an altered perception. And how and why do you get an altered perception? What What is that about? Well, first of all, the way that we are conditioned to exist in society is to block out a lot of information. Intention is like sunlight through a magnifying glass directed at something, your focus of attention, right? And so, so long as you have an intention and we have multiple intentions happening all the time, you have to block out everything that doesn't resonate or entrain to the consciousness or the vibration of that intention. That is how we be powerful manifestors and creators, co-creators in this material plane. But the minute you smoke and or consume THC or any of the mind altering substances, what happens is all that information that you were trying to block out, it's like the filters come off and everything is, all that information is just there. And that is the mind. Mind is not the thinking process as you and I think it to be. Mind is something that's just, it's information that's everywhere. It doesn't exist within you. You receive it. This is what the body is. It's a receiver. You receive the information. The brain has an, a chemical electrical process through which it, just like the digestion system, breaks apart nutrients from food, separates it into fat, carbohydrate, protein, etc. The brain does the same thing with information. It dissects it. it breaks it apart, and then sends it as electrical currents, sends it through electrical currents through various parts of the body. So it sends information to your vital organs, it sends information to your bones, it sends information to your blood, to your muscles. That's why mind is just information all around you, and your, your gray matter is, it's kind of like your digestive system, it's just another receiver that processes. It's like a computer. It receives it and it processes the information. And that's why when you eat or smoke or vape, 
and you have this chemical that goes into the body, what it does is it removes all the filters that are are put in place by you unknowingly so that you can focus on one particular thing to mani- for the purpose of manifesting. It removes all that and suddenly you're aware of all the information that's there. And that's why it's mind altering. And, and as well, it's altering in the body because intuitively what and I don't know this I'm just telling you intuitively what I'm getting the chemicals in THC and magic mushrooms and all these the different chemicals work on the adrenals the cortisol hormone and work on the thyroid hormone so it has to do with the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system and certain strains of marijuana and different mushrooms and different plants in general, all these different plants that we make medicine, mind altering, body altering as spiritual tools and as the masses use to get out of pain, so pain relief to get out of anxiety, so emotional relief to get out of negative thinking, so mind altering, right? What happens is it works on the different hormones in the body, in the adrenals, and in the thyroid, so your parasympathetic and your sympathetic nervous system. And certain strains can activate, ignite and activate, charge you to make you feel more energized, while others deactivate that electrical charge. I th- personally think this is, could be beneficial in someone that has excess cortisol in their body. It deactivates that, it activates the parasympathetic nervous system, and that's what brings you into a state of deep relaxation, which by virtue of that is instantaneous pain relief. Also, because it's taking your mind off of the pain. So many of us don't realize that subconsciously we're constantly connecting to that pain in our physical reality. And so it shuts off both the, con- the conscious awareness and the subconscious awareness. And that's what allows you to go into this deep state of relaxation. That I'm sharing with you as an intuitive. I don't know, maybe science can confirm that if they haven't already. By the way, I don't do a lot of research on the internet, only to verify intuitive information. So those are the four things that I did wrong with the butter. What did I do wrong with the tea? What I did was I made a very weak brew of tea. The heat component was there. The infusion component was there. So the activation of the THC is in the tea. However, because I only used 10 buds for a liter of water, I made a very mild dose. I heard myself say when I was editing the video, oh, this is something I could drink all day. There's truth to that. The dose, think of this type of medicine in relation to dosing, similar to regular dose Tylenol and extra strength Tylenol. And then you've got Tylenol 1, Tylenol 2, Tylenol 3. So it's the dose gets stronger and stronger, right? The butter that I made is equivalent to morphine is what I'm hearing in terms of body pain release, relief. The tea is like a regular Tylenol. So 10 buds in a liter of water is equivalent to like a regular Tylenol in terms of pain relief and in terms of altered consciousness. I am extremely energetically sensitive. Because of that, I'm far more acutely aware of the subtle nuances of shifts. You'll just have to trust me on that one. With the tea, I just like when I made the kombucha, I was aware of such a subtle shift, and I recognize that with the tea. The shift is so subtle that I can still function optimally. And as I drink tea throughout the day, it has the effect of like an Advil as opposed to a Tylenol. The substance in Advil takes time to build in your body and in the brain before it can have that relaxation effect. Tylenol works differently. Tylenol works almost instantly. It goes right to the pain receptor and shuts it off. 
that's similar to the butter. But the tea that I made is more like Advil, where the more you drink it throughout the day, it's not that you get more altered in the consciousness, but it takes time for it to build in the body so that you can stay alert and you can have that gentle, slow easing into pain relief. Why is that important to know? Well, first of all, because when I ate the butter on my toasted fermented egg salad sandwich, two hours later, I was completely incapacitated. I was ready to go lay down and just totally chill, watch a movie, really enjoy the movie because I'm completely relaxed. I'm in a very different conscious space as well. It's not for concentration. And I slept really well. Not something I would go out and drive my car when I'm in that state. The tea, however, when you drink the tea, most likely you won't set off that tester, the trigger in the tester, indicating that you've blown over it. That's important to know. If, if this is truly medicine for your body and you need to consume it in order to function optimally, but you also need to be driving and working on, you know, technology or things that require operation, you don't want to be in the same energy as when you're eating the butter, that potent medicine. You want to be able to have cognitive and physical function. And this is what the tea allows, at least for me. So it's a weak version. It's like Advil, right? Where it takes time to build in the body. Whereas the butter is like morphine or heroin. You take it and the effects are instant and it's just like deep relaxation. So I don't think I did anything wrong with the tea. I think the reason why Spirit had me make the tea and make the butter is so that I could share this information for people that may not know. And for people that actually need this as medicine, no different than they would need Advil or Tylenol or some sort of other narcotic pain inhibitor. To me, this is all cannabis is. It's a pain reliever. It's a pain inhibitor. It also has the similar side effect. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. Because I am so energetically sensitive, in past, I was more reliant on Tylenol and antihistamines such as Claritin. And why Claritin? Because it was supposed to be non-drowsy. I'm so psychically, energetically sensitive that my mind and body gets altered even on those types of chemicals. So for somebody like me, if I have the choice of being on a synthetic chemical that's going to alter my body and my consciousness, or I can choose something more natural, something that's God-made as opposed to man-made, I will choose the God-made. And the reason being is because this physical body is in resonance and alignment with everything that's natural to this planet. It knows how to utilize it and how to expel it, detox it. But when it comes to synthetics, and science has proven this, a lot of synthetics, the body doesn't know how to use it. It doesn't know how to even express it out of the body, detox it, right? And so it stores it in body fat and it stores it in muscles tissues. And this is where we end up getting sick with disease that is not innate or natural to being human. So sadly, synthetics are creating diseases that aren't natural to the human body. And because of that, we don't really have a lot of cures for it other than abstaining from those synthetics. These are natural shamanic tools, just like fermented foods are a natural shamanic food. They shift the microbiome of your gut, which shifts the chemical reaction in your brain, which has a whole different effect on your consciousness, on your emotions, and on your physical well-being. So that is what I did right and what I did wrong and what I personally have learned as a result of creating 
just these two recipes, the butter and the tea. Now I'm going to switch and I'm going to talk about why bubba was not used in the mix. I sensed that bubba was going to be used for something else. I used pink kush, lemon kush, and gelato. Pink and lemon are both 50-50 sativa indica. Gelato is 55% indica and 45% sativa. So they're pretty balanced for the most part in cognitive awareness and also in relaxation. It is essential for me as a creative that I have cognitive expanded awareness my expanded awareness is going to heighten my ability to create, right? To take that invisible information and manifest into some sort of video, right? Whether it's a recipe or hiking or whatever. Indica expands the awareness while sativa grounds the energy. I am innately high wire. Li I'm like a live wire of electricity that needs grounding. This is a beautiful blend for someone like me who's a creative. That's not something that I would want to take before bed because I'm already predispositioned for insomnia. And whether that's because my mind is, you know, racing with ideas or because I've got sub some subconscious, deep-rooted fear that's bubbling to the surface and I'm trying to keep it suppressed because I'm not ready to deal with or heal that, right? And part of dealing with it and healing with it is I have to bring it up into awareness. I wouldn't want to consume pink lemon or gelato at night for those reasons. I wouldn't sleep. But Bubba, on the other hand, Bubba is 80% indica and only 20% sativa. If I consume this before bed, as a shamanic tool, this is going to allow me to go into a very deep REM sleep. So even if you sleep eight hours, there's this assumption that if we sleep eight hours, that the body just automatically goes into autophagy healing. That's not true. You need to be in that deep REM state in order for that to be activated. That's my intuitive vibe. Please correct me scientifically if that's true or not, because I haven't done the research. Sativa is what allows the mind to free. And in shamanics, we call this dreamwalking. You go out, what is the dream? Well, the dream is all the invisible information that you don't have access to that you're denying because you've got that beam of sunlight in the magnifying glass, which is your intention, focused in on something that you have to shut everything else out. It takes that away when you're in the dream world. I think Bubba would be an effective medicine at night for anyone that suffers from insomnia for those reasons, because it would help you to go into that deep REM sleep and all the stuff that you're trying to push down, that's that's why you're anxious, because you're aware of something, but you're trying to deny it. You're pushing it down or away from your awareness because you're not ready to deal with it. It's, it would be too overwhelming. And so personally, from a shamanic perspective, I think Bubba would be a good bed bedtime or pre-bedtime medicine. So that is what I've learned so far from these two recipes, what I did right, what I did wrong, why spirit had me do certain things, the effects that it's had on me, the awareness that I've gleaned from it, and that's what I want to share with you today. Lots more recipes coming up and probably more information that I will disseminate as it comes to me. I hope you found the information in this video useful and helpful. Thank you for watching. Until I see you in a future video, ciao for now.